In this video I will go over the new PC beta release for Call of Dragons. I will show you the new features including graphics and legion control available exclusively to the PC version. G'day Dragon Tamers, Mortal here. Farlight Games has released the Call of Dragons PC beta test. Uh, this enables you to experience the Call of Dragons PC client before the release of the game. You can access that by the link I've put it in the description. Otherwise, you can actually go over to the Discord and into the announcements and the link is there. All you have to do is click on the link and it'll open up the website. Once you open up the website, just on the left hand side, there's the PC client technical test. All you do is press download now. I've already downloaded it, but once it's downloaded, all you do is click on the launcher to set it up. Once it's set up, it'll put a link on your desktop and all you have to do is double click the link. And once it's finished loading and installing, you just start and off you go, she'll start loading up. One thing to keep in mind though, is that before you use an account on your PC, you must already have an account created on a device or emulator. Now that it's loaded up, I'll just quickly go over some of the features. Firstly, the thing that I really do like is the fact that you get uh, some extra customization over your graphics. So you can select a preset from very low, low, middle, high, or very high. My PC is recommended at very high. I do have a fairly decent gaming PC. You can actually select your resolution if you want to. And you can select your frame rate. So you can select 30, 60, 120 or unlimited. One thing to note is that I've got a 240 hertz monitor. So when I activate V-Sync, it will actually, it won't limit the frame rate to 120. It'll limit it to what my PC and my monitor can handle, which is 240 hertz, so which could handle 240 frames. So if you want to actually limit it to 120, you have to turn V-Sync off, which I have done. Now, the only reason that I've limited it as 120, for one, I'm using my PC and I'm recording at the same time on the same PC. So it's just to save a little bit in resources. And these types of games, you really don't need to be running them at 240 frames per second or anything like that. If you're playing like a first person shooter, then you would certainly need, you know, a, a frame rate as high as possible. But for these type of games, you, you, you don't need it. It's not required to be that fast of a reaction time. You can actually go in and change uh, your render quality, your anti-aliasing and your shadow quality. The From the very high setting, all I changed was I changed my frame rate to 120, turned off V-Sync, changed anti-aliasing to X8, and that's it. I also changed my resolution to 2560 by 1440 because that's what my monitor is. Now I'll go over to controls. You can see here that uh, it gives you a bit of an outline of what you what each control does. Uh, and just down the bottom here, you can actually enable screen edge movement. So if you put your cursor on the edge of the screen, it will move left, right, up, down, whichever way you're going. I don't actually like screen edge movement, so I just disable it. Now this is where you get a little bit of an advantage on the PC version. You actually have a whole bunch of different shortcuts. Now each one of these can be remapped so if you don't want your chat as enter you can change it to something else like tab for example i like mine as enter anyway because it's pretty much the same as most of the other games that you play on pc you press enter to start the chat where this gets a little bit more detailed though is if you go right down to your legion control there's a couple of extra things that you can do on pc that you can't do on mobile device or an emulator for example being able to create legion groups, and you can do that. And I'm gonna demonstrate all of this for you. So I'm gonna show you exactly how this is done and, and the benefits of that. I'll do that once I've finished going through this. So you can select, uh, set a selected legion as group one. So you can just create different groups just with the short key, shortcuts. And then if you've got one legion in there, if you wanted to add another legion in there, you can just press shift one instead of control one or from one to five. And then it's just as simple as selecting one, two, three, four or five to select the respective legion, that you, the legion group. Now I'll demonstrate how to create legion groups and how to how to create legion groups and how to add legions to that group and also just go through some of the movement. To zoom out there, I'm just scrolling the scroll wheel. 
Uh, you can also, if you want finer zoom increments, you can also use page up and page down to zoom in and zoom out as well. I'll just bring out some of these legions. Okay, so to select a legion, you can just press the corresponding shortcut of F1 through to F5. You can see them on the side, which legion is what. F1, F2, F3. So if you press F1 here, it'll select Lilia. Now, if you aren't focused on Lilia and you press F1, it will select her. Um, but if you want to focus on her, you double hit F1 and it will actually go and focus on that legion for you. Now to create the groups, what you do is you select the legion that you want and press Control 1 and you'll see a little 1 appear just next to the avatar. And then if you press 1, it'll automatically select that group. We can create a second group, Control 2, and now the 2 appears on this one's avatar. And then if we wanted to add one of these to to one of these other legions that we created, we just press Shift 1 and it will automatically add it to that group. So now when we press 1, it will select both of the legions that are in group 1. If we want to select 2, we just select 2 and it will move to that legion. This would be especially helpful in war, especially when you're doing multiple things. For example, when you are controlling your melee units you could have them in one group then you could have your ranged units in a second group and then you could have like your builders in a third group and this way you could quickly and easily jump between each of those groups to for easier control this is going to give you a fair bit of an advantage uh just in speed just being able to get things done quicker over what you'd be able to do on a mobile device one thing to note though is that once these return once the legions return to the city the groups automatically disband and I'll just show you that now and here we go I'll just select them and pull them back out and you see that all of the numbers have disappeared off them now, if you want to select all of your legions, you can just press Control A and that will select them all. Alternatively, you can hold down Alt and then just draw the box over the top of them. And then that will select them all. One of the things I do like also is that movement is done with a right click. Instead of having to drag them, you can just press right click and they will move. Also, you can press right click and give command to attack as well. Activating the artifacts you can do with QWERTY depending which shortcut is corresponding to the artifact. And when you do that, it automatically focuses on that legion. You can move around the map just with your up, down, left, and right. Or you can still click and drag like you do on a phone. Another thing to note is that you can't open two accounts at the same time. Uh, so you can't have one of your characters open on the PC and one of them open on your mobile device. It will log you out no matter which one you log into. Um, so I know with Rise of Kingdoms there was a time there where you could. I'm not sure if they do anymore because I haven't played Rise of Kingdoms for quite some time now. But you used to be able to log into two accounts at the same time. In this you certainly cannot do that. I do think that the game is much smoother on PC. I haven't had a chance to test it out in battle yet, so it'll be interesting to see how, how it performs. I did do some frames testing, some FPS testing on it, and I'll just activate that now. Now you can see that I've got it here limited to 120 frames, so it doesn't actually go over that. But if you go and change some of your settings and change the and turn V-Sync on, even though you've got it limited, you'll see it instantly pop straight up to 240 frames, which is the maximum my monitor can handle. And when you log out, you'll see it, it hasn't limited it to that 120 frames per second. So if you do want it limited, you do have to turn V-Sync off. And you can see now it has limited it to those 120 frames. Again, you might want to, you know, max out the frames. Me personally, I don't think there's any need in this game to max it out. Anything over 120 frames per second is going to be... I mean, that's that's a lot for this type of game. Uh, I mean, you really don't even need anything over, over 60, to be honest. 
Anyways, guys, it was just a quick overview of some of the features and controls of the PC version. If you found it helpful, please leave a like and subscribe. Thanks very much for watching.